what was the mistake I made that got my visa denied? Biggest mistake that applicants make when they go into a visa interview is they give short answers. When you go to the interview, I want you to yeah. imagine that you're you're not speaking to a judge. Imagine that you're speaking to a colleague. Getting your visa approved is the most important stage of the entire study abroad process. With a visa denial, the effort you put into getting an admission, a scholarship, may all be fruitless. On this platform, I have interacted with a lot of individuals who have shared their visa acquisition experience with us. But how about hearing from the visa officers themselves who actually issues the visa to let you know the secrets behind a visa approval and or a denial? What can you do to get your visa application approved? What should you avoid? In this interview, I am interacting with a former visa officer who works with Argo Visa to share all the secrets. My name is Fred. Thank you for subscribing. This is the Fred Effect. Let's get started. Hi everyone, my name is Frederick and you are welcome to the TFE YouTube channel. Today we are privileged to have a former visa officer with us. Normally you get the perspective as an applicant. It is good to hear from the people who are issuing your visa to understand what they are expecting from you. So we are collaborating with Argo Visa to give you an exclusive insight into a visa officer's mind and how they go about approving your visa. You would don't want to miss any aspect of this interview. So I will let you introduce yourself um, quickly and then we get to their questions. Sure. It's good to be here, Frederick. Thanks for having us. So we're happy to, uh, to collaborate with you and to be able to speak to your audience. Uh, I'm Ben. I used to be a visa officer myself. I did that for the U.S. government and embassies and consulates around the world for many years. Uh, I did over 60,000 visa interviews in total, sitting there at the window, making the decisions on every type of visa that you can imagine, tourist visas, student visas, marriage visas, diversity lottery visas, everything that is out there, I've done that. Uh, and it's not only me at the Argo team. Uh, at Argo, we've got over 20 officers who have worked in 35 different countries, speak 14 different languages, and in total, the number of visas that we've adjudicated is over 1 million. So uh, we're bringing real expertise wow. to visa applicants. We're the only team in the world that's able to do this, to bring this much expertise, um, where you can actually get real insider knowledge from a former visa officer about what actually goes into the decision, why a visa is approved, why a visa is denied. So, you know, I left the government a few years ago and I've been helping people pass their visa interviews since then because while I was on the inside, I saw that there were people who were getting their visas denied unnecessarily for two main reasons. One, because uh, maybe the officer just didn't right. understand the situation, didn't speak the local language, didn't know enough about the local country. And you as an applicant can actually help that. You can educate them a little bit when needed. And the other reason was because applicants would be poorly prepared, sometimes underprepared or sometimes badly prepared by someone who doesn't really know what someone should do in a visa interview. And I saw applicants that would come into the interview and do odd things, say odd things, um, behave in, in weird, unnatural ways because they'd been told this is the way you have to act to get your visa issued. That's not necessary. And there are ways to get the visa issued, which involve telling the truth in a direct and pointed way to get your point across, to get your story across, to give the visa officer that confidence to issue the visa. So that's why I came out. That's why all of the Argo team came out of the government. And now we help people like you get your visa issued. Awesome. So you would want to subscribe to the channel because after this, I'm going to give you a code that will give you a 10% off if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Ben and the Argo Visa team. So please subscribe to the channel and you get a code because you have subscribed to the TFV YouTube channel to get a 10% off when you book a consultation with Argo Visa team and you get to speak to Ben one-on-one. -on -one. So Ben, let's get going. So the number one question everybody asks is, what was the mistake I made that got my visa denied? So I guess what I'm trying to ask is, what is the number one visa mistakes that applicants usually make? Well, that's a good question. Uh, the biggest mistake that applicants make when they go into a visa interview is they give short answers. Short and also uninforming answers. So people come into the interview and I think what's right. going on, because I've had a lot of experience and I've gone through and I've seen everything that the people who are online giving advice say, the piece of information that's out there that's the least 
accurate and actually the most harmful is that you should just say as little as possible, right? They say, what are you going to do in the U.S.? And then you respond with study. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, well, how are you going to pay for it? Okay. Myself. These answers don't help you. They actually hurt you. And the reason is because I, what most people may assume, and it's an incorrect assumption, is that the visa officers start up here at approval. Like if you don't make any mistakes, your visa will be approved. And it's only if you make a mistake, then you drop to a refusal. But that's not the case. In the regulations, in the law, right. it's actually surprising. I was surprised when I learned this when I first became a visa officer and went through the training. Visa applicants are considered guilty until they can prove themselves innocent. Guilty of what? Not necessarily a crime, but guilty of not being a qualified applicant. And it's only when the applicant proves that they are qualified that then the visa officer will issue the visa. So being reticent, being quiet, not wanting to give much information actually hurts you because you stay down here. You never get up here where the visa officer will be confident they can issue the visa. So you've got to give answers that contain information because the visa officer has to feel like they understand your situation before they're going to feel confident enough to click that issue button. So are there a limited number of questions a visa officer is restricted to ask? No. The questions that the visa officers ask, well, they can ask anything they want, right? The most common question, though, will be, what's your purpose of travel to the U.S.? Definitely for a B visa. What's your purpose of travel? If you're a student, you can assume that they're going to ask you, okay, what, where are you going to study? What are you going to study? Something like that. But after that, there's no guarantee that they're going to ask anything. There's no guarantee they're going to ask about your funding, about why you chose this school, about, for instance, did you apply to any other schools? There's no guarantee that they're going to ask any of these. Why do they ask these questions then? Why do they ask, have you applied to any other schools? It's not because you have to apply to other schools, right? It's because they want to hear you talk. They want to hear you tell them your story. They want, they want to know that you're a real student. And what do real mm -hmm. students do? Well, they have a student journey, right? A real student is studying hard and thinking about where they want to go to school, right? And why have they chosen these places? Well, well, it could be because the academics are great. Maybe you got a scholarship. Maybe you went to an academic fair and this school impressed you. Maybe this school was the most responsive and recruited you. Maybe you went to an, an educational consultant who recommended a few schools and you applied to this one. Maybe you've got a cousin who, who went to that school. Maybe you've always just wanted to go to Los Angeles. And so you looked at the schools in Los Angeles. There, there can be any reason, but the visa officer wants to feel like you're a real student. If you just say uh, the school has a beautiful campus of 20 acres and they have a student faculty ratio of 14 to one, that's not the reason people choose schools. That You went to the school's website or a Wikipedia article and just memorized two sentences. That doesn't make the visa officer confident that you're a real student. So you have okay. to be real. It's the, 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 the secret. And I know it's, it sounds simple. It's just the concept okay. that you're having a conversation with the visa officer. Awesome. So from the African perspective and me coming from Ghana as an African, when we talk to elderly people or people in higher offices, making an eye contact is not one of them. Now, how important is eye contact in the F1 visa interview, generally a visa interview approval? Mm. Well, you know, these are Americans that you're doing the interviews with. Um, and, you know, Americans come from a lot of different backgrounds, but culturally, you know, they're all uh, Americans. And, you know, while they may have some experience in Ghana or in other countries in the region, in Nigeria or Sierra Leone, they're going to still feel in their heart, you know, the American standards for things, which is confidently looking into someone's eyes, making eye contact, um, speaking clearly, right. Uh, right? Feeling, feeling confident that when you, when you're confident, they're going to feel confident about you. Right. But, uh, speaking kind of like this quietly and not wanting to make eye contact, it makes them think, well, why, right? Is it because, uh, you know, they know that it, they might assume yeah. it's because you're nervous, but then while I know mm -hmm. most students are nervous because it's a, important interview, right? And they're, they're concerned about the outcome. The visa officers will immediately perhaps assume that, oh, they're nervous because they're lying to me. That's what they start to assume, yes. right? So the way, the way to right. assume, to, to approach this, and I know that in a lot of cultures, you know, deference to authority is very important to, to elders, to anyone, you know, in a government, government position. And so you might, you know, kind of be in this mode of, of thinking, oh, I need, oh, yes, sir. No, sir. Please, sir. That kind of thing. That's not what Americans like. 
Americans are kind of, uh, they don't really like hierarchy in American workplaces. We yeah. don't say, uh, sir or ma'am or ma'am or madam for our, for our, our bosses. We just say, yes, John, right? Or of course, Susan, right? That's how we talk to our bosses. There's only one person in the entire embassy that people will call sir. And that's the ambassador, right? So in the entire organization, there's one person. And that's actually quite rare. And it's kind of a, a formality that's a, a tradition. Um, you know, we say, yes, sir, Mr. Ambassador, right? And there's, but there's no one else. So when you go to the interview, I want you to yeah. imagine that you're, you're not speaking to a judge or a policeman. Imagine that you're speaking to a, a, a colleague, right? So when you're at work, and you're talking to someone that's your same level, right? You're, you're not calling them, sir, right? But you're still being professional, right? You want them to think of you as a professional. Okay. So yeah, and you treat them professionally, right? So you treat you treat them nicely, you treat them formally, uh, but you're not being subservient. You're not being uh, too deferring to them. Awesome, awesome. Glad you bring that perspective. So if I'm going to a community college, if I'm going to an Ivy League, my question is, does my college really matter? like the, the, the standard of my college and what program I'm going to pursue. I want you to combine these two. Does the kind of university or the college I'm going into and my program really matter in the visa approval? Mm -hmm. It does. Now, the program doesn't matter as much as the school. Uh, you know, sometimes people might think, okay, this type of program sounds better than that type of program. Um, mm -hmm. But really, it's the school that you're going to. Now, when you if you go to an information session, uh, from the embassy, they're they're going to say, nope, all schools are legitimate. You can go to a community college, you can go to an English language school, you can go to a four-year university. It's all legit because they can't say that they're going to give pre give preference to some schools and not to other schools. But in practice, it's inevitable. When they see Harvard or Princeton or Yale or one of these best universities in the world, they're going to think, oh, wow, Harvard has accepted this student. They must have really strong academic credentials, right? And they're going to issue all of those. And then let's say you've got a middle school, a middle level school, um, right. where they've heard of the name of the school. They know it's a real school, right? Uh, you know, uh, but maybe it's not the best school, but still it's got a reputation, right? They know, okay, well, this is a real school. Students in America that I know, I might have friends that uh, have gone to this school. So I know that you have to, you have to apply, you have to be accepted, you have to be a real student. But then there's schools that they've never heard of, maybe yeah. community colleges, maybe smaller four-year schools that they've never heard of. And they're going to think, I don't know anything about this school. And if I've never heard of it, it must be very small, doesn't have a reputation. And that's going to make them more skeptical because they don't know, okay, do they have real entrance requirements? Do you have to pass a test? Do you have to submit scores or transcripts? I don't, I don't even know. So you're going to have to prove why this is a good school um, and why you're, you're a trustworthy student. And then at the uh, the lower end of that list is going to be language schools. If you're just going to study English, and I don't know if in your audience you have anybody that's uh, in that situation from a francophone country, but if you're just going to study English, that's the one where those schools will accept anyone. So it's not that those schools are bad. It's that the best student can go to an English school and also someone who's not a student at all can just say, yep, I want to go to an English school. And so that's that's the one where they're going to have the harshest uh, the harshest review of. Thank you. You're still watching here on the TFV YouTube channel. We are privileged to have the AgroVisa team, specifically um, Ben with us, who has interviewed more than 600,000 visa applicants. He is very experienced in these visa processes. It is always great to have their perspective. So whether this is your first time going for your visa interview, you've ever been refused several times, the best way is to interact or talk to a former visa officer who understands your situation better to be able to advise you, have a mock interview with you and review your document before you go for your next interview. So because you have subscribed to the TFV YouTube channel, if you use the code FRED10, you will get a 10% discount if you book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with AgroVisa. Remember the code is FRED10 and you have to type it as it appears on the screen. So this gives you a 10% discount when you book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with Argo Visa. So you're going to have the opportunity for a former visa officer to review your document, give you an expert advice, and also organize a one-on-one -on -one mock interview to ensure that you're very prepared before you appear 
at the embassy for your interview. The website link to book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with the Argo Visa team will be shared in the video description. All you need to do is to click on it, select the package you are interested in and type in the code FRED10 and you're going to get a 10% discount so that you save some money for yourself because you have subscribed to this channel. So it is a very simple process. Here is how to go about it. To book a consultation with a former visa officer, you will simply click on the link, which I will share in the video description. I'll also put it in the comment section. So it will be pinned in the comment section. Just use this specific link in order to get the 10% discount. It will take you to this website. Now, when you come to the website, you click on book consultation. This website will open. All you need to do is to type in your first name, your last name, you type your email, you set up a password and then click on that and then you create an account. So when you are about to check out, you'll be asked if you have a special promotion code. Then you click here, then you type in the code Fred 10. So the, the, the promotion code will be applied after you type in that and that's it you're all set you get a 10 percent off i wish you the best as you prepare for the final stage of your study abroad journey that is getting your visa approved it comes with huge excitement so don't be discouraged if you've ever been refused this is your time my name is fred thank you for subscribing i'll see you in another video